My name is Rachel and I'm with the City of Hot Springs Stormwater Division. And so one of the things that we do is we go out on complaints. We get phone calls, it never fails every time it rains. People call, they're like, hey, I have this stormwater issue, what can I do? I'm at my house, what can I do? Fix it with landscaping. There are so many solutions. Use it, don't lose it. So many people want to divert it into the storm system. What happens with that is as rainwater flows across your yard and impervious surfaces like driveways and parking lots, it picks up pollution. It picks up trash, it picks up yard debris, and it carries it unfiltered into our local creeks and lakes. Unfiltered is a really important word because whatever it picks up is going to end up in our creeks, it's gonna end up in Lake Hamilton, and it's gonna ultimately end up in the Gulf of Mexico. So what we do locally is really important on a grand scale because what we do adds up to whoever is downstream from us and it flows into the Gulf of Mexico. So some of the things that you can do in your yard, there are several. Bioswales, bioswales are pretty much just a ditch. It's a simple way to divert your water to where you want it to go. You can divert it into a rain garden. So a rain garden, and I, I have an example of a rain garden. It was damp whenever I put it in. So it's sweating a little bit, but you've got layers to your rain garden. So what it's gonna do is when the rain goes into the rain garden, the rain garden's not flat. So there's a ditch and it's layered. You've got gravel, you've got soil, and you've got either mulch or you've got rock. And then you can put plants in it. I highly suggest, I really like a multi-use. So if you're using plants, why not use some native pollinator plants? So then you're helping the bees and you're helping the butterflies and you're also dealing with the problem that you've got at your home. And it also helps filter pollution or pollutants that are in your water. So earlier I was listening to the gentleman speak about bees and he talked about using chemicals in your yard. And most people do overuse. I'm not gonna say chemicals are bad, but the overuse of them is. So what happens is when you overuse them in your yard and then it rains, it gets carried into our local waterways. A rain garden will help filter some of that out. Another solution, and it's a really popular one, we are actually going to be doing a rain barrel workshop. We did one last summer. We're going to be doing one this summer, so I'm shamelessly plugging that in here. Please come join us on June 24th from 10 to 11 at Family Park Pavilion 1 where we are going to actually, in front of you, do a rain barrel and do a presentation about rain barrels more in depth than what I'm doing today. But rain barrels are a really good solution. Uh, use it, don't lose it. There are several reasons why it's important to do this. The first one is conservation. The more that you use the rainwater, the less potable water you actually have to use. And so you're using that rainwater instead of using potable water. I'm doing another shameless plug, if that's okay. The city and the mayor is doing the mayor water pledge challenge. So if you've got a cell phone and you want to pledge to help conserve water, rain barrels are a great, great way to do that. You can follow the QR code that's on here and sign up for the mayor's challenge. I believe we are in the top, what does it say here? The top 30 nationwide for pledge participation. So we actually do win for y'all, the people that sign up. If we win, one person from that winning town gets their utility bills paid for a year. So that is a good reason to sign up. So rain barrels, they are also very adaptable. I've gotten a lot of questions about rain barrels. There's no right or wrong way to do it. One of the most common questions that I get is, are rain barrels illegal? They are not. <laughs> I get that quite a bit. Um, rain barrels are not illegal. Now, if you are going to have a lot of rain barrels 
and you're going to tie them into your irrigation system that is also tied into your potable water, then it does need to be an engineered system. You will have to go through the city to make sure that there's backflow prevention because we don't want to accidentally contaminate our neighbor's drinking water. But they are not illegal. We actually highly suggest you use them. Again, there are so many positives to it. There are different ways you can do it. I did these with a trash can. I will highly suggest if you are going to use trash cans to use the bigger, sturdier ones. They're, they're a thicker plastic that you can get from Lowe's, Home Depot, Sutherland's, and they're more heavy duty. I just use these for demonstration purposes. The guts of the system, you can kind of get anywhere. You can get pieces from your local hardware, from your local plumbing. I actually ordered a kit online for mine. It came with all of this, where you can attach it to your gutters. You are gonna have to cut your gutter. You put this in and it attaches it. You can cut the, the hose however long you need it to be. It also came with our drill bits to cut our, and they're, he, they're heavy duty, so they've already been used and you can't even tell it. So whenever winter comes, we know it freezes. We've gotta winterize our pipes. We've gotta make sure outside the things that we need super easy that comes off and it comes with and now you're winterized so it's super easy easy to take care of and that one right there will just come off you can put a spigot to it so you can attach a hose someone earlier asked me what about a soaker hose I'm gonna be really honest everything about rain barrels that I've learned I've learned from the internet um, I don't have um, gutters on my home, so I don't have a rain barrel, but gravity, as long as it's working with you, I would see no reason why you can't attach a soaker hose to it and turn it on when you want to water and then turn it off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you wanted, if that's what you wanted, you could raise them, um, let gravity do the work for you. And there's no reason why you, you couldn't. I may be wrong, but from what I've read, I think I'm right. And then you can connect, you can really connect as many as you want. So this piece right here actually doesn't go in here. It didn't come with the piece, but it came with all of these fittings. Here's another option of how you can connect them. Or another way is if you don't have gutters, and this is what I'm gonna do at my home. I have one area of my roof that a lot of water falls from. I don't necessarily have gutters. So I'm actually just going to take screen and I'm going to put screen around it so that it'll keep bugs and, and leaves and things. And I'm just going to put it at the corner that kind of has the most water dripping off of it. You also, there's a, a fact on one of these sheets. And I wanted to share that with y'all. It says one inch of rainfall creates approximately 623 gallons of water falling on a thousand square foot roof. It's a lot of water. A lot of water. And so you can use that to help the environment, to help your pocketbook by using less potable water. So it's a good solution to anything that you've got as far as your, your yard. They're adaptable to anything. If you're needing to have it where you can take it off somewhere else, then you can do that as well. You can kind of manufacture it how you want. And online, there are a ton of resources. I do have handouts up here as well. A couple of other things that you can do. Trees. Trees are great for areas that stay wet. And there are all kinds of species of trees. I'm not a plant person. My mom actually has a section in her yard that is called Plant 911, and she's over there and can attest to that, where I take my plants that I almost kill and bring them to her, and she revives them. Before any birthday party or get together, I just go to her house and borrow hanging baskets. So I can't keep plants alive, so I don't even try anymore, but trees will pretty much take care of themselves. So trees are a great way if you've got an area in your yard and you kind of want to leave it and forget it, they will soak up a lot of rainwater as well. And we also have handouts about the stormwater, especially in urban environments. 
Um, I know it's already over, so I can't shamelessly plug this one. But if you watch the city's website or the Arbor Day Foundation, or I believe it's the um, maybe the Arbor Society, I'm not sure. But if you will watch our Facebook page, periodically we do tree giveaways. Um, I know other groups do in Garland County as well. And so that's another great way to help kind of tame your stormwater, to help use it. Because the more you keep on your property, the more that you soak up with vegetation, the more that you hold and you use, that's the less amount of stormwater that's going into the municipal stormwater system. That means that there's less upgrades that we have to use do because it's using less. It also means that there's less pollution that it's picking up because it's not flowing across your yard or impervious surfaces. Does anybody have any questions? I think that's kind of my, the end of my spiel. Um, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> questions? We do. So, yes and no. Um, we do, Okay, so we have an arborist, um, our urban forester, if you've got issues with a tree and you're in the city limits or directly right outside of the city limits, he will go out. His name's Alan Bates. I think most of y'all know him. Um, so if you have trees, he is a wealth of knowledge and he can answer any questions you have about trees. Um, as far as if you're having a stormwater issue and you live in the city limits, our jurisdiction ends at the city limits. But if you are in the city limits, if you're having stormwater issues, if it's on your personal property, generally our maintenance will end at your property line. But there's no reason why you can't give us a call. We'll come out, we'll look and see if there's a simple solution that, that might be there, and we have no problem talking to you about that at all. Just give us a call and tell us what we're there for. Any other questions? <laughs> I mean, that was kind of short. But. <laughs>